Welcome to The Pointy End. I'm Keith Sutherland. Today my guest is well-known Bendigo musician Steve Sexton. Welcome, Steve. Okay, okay. Now you've got a very exciting project coming up that um, you're doing some crowdfunding and we'll come into that, but um, that's f for a three-track um, EP coming up. So just explain briefly what crowdfunding is because I know it's a new innovation and I see a lot of it coming up on Facebook and Twitter and all these sorts of things, but this is something new for Bendigo and probably new for a project for you. It's my first time uh, trying to fund any of my music uh, through crowdfunding and while crowdfunding's been around a little while, um, it's still probably not that widely known or perhaps not even widely accepted for um, music, local musicians at least. Um, there are a number of crowdfunding platforms, uh, Possible is the one that I've chosen and I didn't go into it lightly. I've uh, recorded once before and, and the band that I was in did actually discuss whether we'd go down the road of crowdfunding. I had a bit of a chat to a couple of other musos that I'd known had uh, made use of crowdfunding, one of them being uh, Jen Clower, and um, she advised me uh, that you need to actually wait until you've got some sort of um, supporter base behind you um, and that your first crowdfunding um, attempt should be um, uh, as reasonable as possible. So I went down the track of you know, looking at my budget, um, trying again trying to pick a small uh, target. So uh, the second EP is three tracks, as you said, um, and the crowdfunding component is is less than half of the entire budget. So trying to be a bit, um, you know, uh, can't think of the word. Being, and I guess <laughs> from the per, the persons they want to help some aspiring artists, yeah, well, really that, aspiring artists, because you've been out there. For a while. There's, there's a bit of both. There's, there's, they want to help and they want to, hopefully, if they understand the, the process, they want to be involved as well. So if someone um, supports your music and likes your music and, and would, or, or actually just knows you as a person and wants you to succeed, as well as that, they actually get to feel that they're a part of the entire project. So their, their pledge or donation um, give, makes them a part of the process feel a bit of ownership on it. So, um, and what sort of a target have you set? You said it was about half of... Well, it's actually less cost. than half. So it's about, it's going to cost about 5,000 to put the EP out and that's with promotion and, and um, pressing the whole, the whole works. Um, and the target for the possible campaign is, is a, a very modest $1,500. And how are we going for that at this stage? We're doing exceptionally well. I think we've got 27 or 28 days left to reach the target um, and we're up to $890 out of the 1500 So pretty happy with that so far. So another 600 to go yeah. and um, so you're hoping the people, and I guess it, from the point of view of donating some money, you sort of feel pretty proud if the thing takes off and that you're part and parcel of trying to help someone to get into this space. There's, there's that side of it and there's also, um, you know, looking at it from a, a small business, I mean music, you know, these days if you begin to take it a little seriously, you, you also see it from the small business point of view and, and having sat through Claire Bowditch's um, small business music seminar that she ran in Bendigo a while back, um, that's, that's kind of, you know, urged me on to, to see it that way. Um, so, you know, if you want to um, invest in, in sort of local um, small business and, you know, an artistic form of being music, um, you would like to see it succeed. Um, given that our last EP had uh, eight weeks worth of high rotation across the country um, on um, ABC Country and, and Kicks FM, um, we had great exposure through Triple J and Triple M thanks to uh, Sarah Howell's um, Roots and All program on Triple J. Um, Ugly Phil from Triple M gave us a couple of spins and, and did, I think, the world's fastest interview. I, I don't, don't think I've ever had to think and speak so fast. But, um, yeah, they were great exposures. And, and after talking to um, Frank Verasso from Verasso PR, uh, who did our PR for the last EP, he said, you know, that was great, we got good, good spins and getting out there, need to follow it up with something real soon so that we don't lose any momentum and that's what this EP is all about. Is now the, the flip side of that as well is that the, the next three songs I think are, are, are a much more evolutionary step. Uh, they're, they're more new, they're within 12 months of being written, they're the best things I've ever done um, and I'm hanging So you've written all the songs, yeah. the three of them? Yep. Um, I've got a lot more as well. I mean, we could have actually put an album out if um, finances weren't a 
constraint, but you know, the way that we look at it now, people aren't buying albums. They're, they're, if they are buying songs, they're buying them off iTunes or, or similar and, yeah. and downloading them as a, a song at a time and you know, hearing going, yeah, I like that, I want it, um, or they're streaming it. So there's probably not a lot, um, not a lot of reason to put out an album at the moment if you don't have so much money. But the idea is that you can put out some songs, go out and tour them around, let people hear them live, and then follow them up as soon as possible with another release. So it's just a kind of smarter, you know, small business model. Is this a sort of a way of um, having more control on the production side of it? You know what you want um, rather than if you get involved, if you're lucky enough to get a contract, yeah. um, they sort of take control of you or is this? Oh, it depends who you, who's, who's taking control and, and what the producer's like. Um, a lot of people choose to self-produce. Uh, the experiences I've had is that if you're in a band and um, you end up, my last experience was that you would uh, become a bit of a committee and, and uh, after 12 months of being death by committee you come out with something that, that shows that we're all trying to go in a bunch of different directions and, and I think that's why now you know pretty happy to engage a producer and say you're standing on the outside having a listen um, well if we like you and you like us then it's a, a good thing to let them take some creative control never been in the situation where someone comes along with $80,000, takes you off to, I don't know, 301 in Sydney and says, you know, this is now going to be a dance record. I can't imagine that, that happening. I mean, it probably happens to other people. It's very unlikely that that sort of thing would happen to me. Um, just by virtue of the fact that my style you know, wouldn't lend itself, I don't think, to, to being kind of manhandled off in any one bizarre direction, but um, oh, I guess so We'll see know. the real thing when it comes up. Yeah. Now, I also noticed that you've got some um, specific do um, dollar pledges at certain rewards parts, so if someone 75 up to $150 donation and can be as small as $5 donation, so, and anyone can go online. So just to explain how that sort of works, some of those pledges that yep. um, go along the way. As you say, we, 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 we love the big and the small. Um, you can make a donation, you can be an, an anonymous pledger and uh, put in $5 or, or $10, but um, as you say, there are also rewards, which is part of the um, possible style uh, of crowdfunding. So if you have a look on our website, and I'm sure that'll pop up at some point during this discussion, um, you can... Uh, do you want to the, mention your website at this point? Or uh, it's probably uh, hard on the on top of your head. But. It is. It's, um, it's www.stevesaxtonmusic.com. So the Steve Saxton Music is all one word. Yep. From there, there are links off to the possible campaign and, and Facebook and all of the yeah, Twitter and all of those sorts of good things. Um, the possible campaign and the rewards, the rewards range from $5 through to $1,000. Um, obviously, we'd love a thousand dollars, but uh, makes it easy. Then yeah, why not? Your you know, plenty of cash. Throw it out there. Um, there's a three hundred and fifty dollar uh, up at the top end of the scale. The, the one of the larger ones, the three hundred and fifty dollar reward gets you a two set um, gig. We'll turn up and 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 play for for around about two hours, as well as give you a, a copy of the EP and and signed and all that sort of thing. At the the lower end, there's a, an advanced digital copy. Uh, that as soon as we're finished and, and pressed, we can send it out to you. Um, there, there's a couple of rewards where I'll uh, cover your favourite song. I've had a couple of those come in already. One of them is pretty interesting. Uh, is uh, Rise by Public Image Limited, which isn't my, my normal uh, style of song. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenge of putting that one together. Um, another, re another reward was to write you your own song. I think that was the $175 reward. It's um, a very cheap song for yourself. It is a pretty cheap song, isn't it? But um, it's, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do it now in my own time and, and get it out there by the end of September. And, and I'll, I actually like the challenge. It's kind of fun when you know that someone's uh, that interested that they want to not only pledge, but, but they're interested to see what I will come up for them. So you know, the next step now is you've got your musicians that are going to back you on all of this. Um, are they local musicians or where do they come from? And if you've got a recording studio, obviously you have, because you've told us it's worth 5000 yep. So that's the next step. Firstly, who's the local musicians, if they are local? Three out of four are local. Um, uh, one of those three has only just become a local. Um, Bradley Bradford uh, is a, uh, a great bass player. He's a, a funny fella that uh, appeared from the UK. He's uh, moved over with his wife. 
uh, only very recently. Um, I was fortunate enough to meet him through um, Greg at Muso Stuff. Uh, so he's uh, playing the low notes for us. Um, Tyson Hodges, that lots of locals would know Tyson. Yeah, we all know Tyson. Yep, yep. And a great guitar player, and we're exceedingly yep. lucky to have him on board. Um, Jamie Tolley is the drummer, and he's been playing with guys like Sleepy West and Jordan Allen, and Roscoe. He's an exceptionally good drummer. Um, and our only out of town at this time round is um, a guy called Brenton Rice, who's a magnificent keyboard player, and, and I'm actually told a better guitar player than he is a keyboard player, wow. but I haven't actually seen him play guitar yet. Has a great voice for harmonies, so I'm dead set lucky to have these guys on board. And the studio, whereabouts is it going to be? The studio is uh, in Yarraville, it's affectionately known as Yikesville. Um, recorded the last EP there with Shane O'Mara. Shane, uh, as I, I think I probably tell um, everybody that'll listen, Shane was um, uh, received an aria for uh, recording the Audrey's, uh, their last album. Um, he's an incredible guitar player, he's Paul Kelly's guitar player for a few years and if you've heard the song uh, Making Gravy, that was Shane's slide playing. Okay. Yep. So happy to be recording it's next week, next Thursday, Friday, Saturday we're recording with Shane. So, um, oh, it sounds really positive it. and yep. um, just finally, you're sort of coming up, you've had some successes as you said before with what's been happening. <clears throat> All this is predicated of course on getting some airplay again now. You're following it up with a CP, yep. but um, what's your chances? And I suppose until the product is finished, you've got to get it out there. But how do you do that? Do you go and hook it out to radio stations or someone do that for you? Someone does it for us, a guy called Frank Verasso from Verasso PR. The um, last time around when we put the EP together, having had a few years' experience playing around and, and putting out uh, different you know, singles and things with other bands, it became pretty obvious that um, running around to radio stations by yourself, um, there's an absolute sea of people that are doing yeah. it. And it's as in every business and in every pursuit, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Um, and it's the whole networking thing. So if you can find someone who knows those people who can get it, get the, get the message out there, and Frank's certainly one of those guys that can. Um, so is that all part of the cost? So Indeed. you said about 5000 yep. that yep. Frank, because that's really the big Frank, part of it. And Frank is a cost. Yeah. Um, he's not free, but he's very <laughs> good at imagine. what he does. Um, and he, we played the, the last song home to him and then went and had a chat with him and I said, you know, what do you think of the song? You know, is, is it a good song? And he said, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't. And it was that confidence that, you know, he, he was able to take it places and, and get it played. Um, and maintain that play and in, you know, I think this time around we're, we're probably even a little more confident based on the, I think the quality of the song is better. Well, you've had some runs on the board with yeah. the last one, obviously that's get your foot in the door. Yeah. If Frank's out there promoting it, the second EP Indeed. coming up, so you've got a very big thing. Well, good luck. This is um, really quite exciting for you, for Bendigo, and we will put that up so that um, people can get on board, support um, the local artist that's going some crowdfunding. So, Steve, good luck for the future. Good luck with this EP, and we'll watch with them um, to see how the progress goes in the next few months, I dare say. Awesome. Thanks, Keith. Thank you, Steve.